welcome today we shall be looking into the compression in natural gas system now in this lecture what we shall learn we shall learn about the various types of compressors some fundamentals about compression and the determination of the work and efficiency of compression and the different operating conditions for compressors so first let us come to the need of compression we need compression why because for the gas transmission from the gas fields to the consumer and for this we need compressor stations to boost up the natural gas during its travel from the gas well to the various distribution points at various levels why because the wind gas does not have enough potential energy and potential energy is lost during the flow through the various systems due to friction and other causes so we need to boost up the gas from time to time and that is done through the com uh, compressor stations and these The stations are of different types, like fluid or gas guzzling station, relay or main station, depressurizing and storage fill stations, distribution plant stations. And in this find, we find that all these different type of stations uh, do different kinds of uh, uh, work for different levels of compression. Here we find for fluid gas stations, they send low pressure gas from wells into transmission or the distribution line, and the kind of pressure level they handle is about. 750 psig or about 50 bar g, and this they handle volume from a few thousand to many million cubic feet per day. Then these relay stations are they are boosting the pressure from about 200 to 13 psig for of large volumes of gas in transmission lines. Then we have repressurizing stations which provide gas pressure as high as 6000 psig for processing of secondary oil recovery. Then we have storage fill stations, which compress the trunk line gas for injection into the storage wells at pressures up to 4,000 psig. We shall just learn what is trunk line gas. And then distribution plant stations. These are pump gas from holder supply to medium or high pressure distribution lines to about 20 to 100 psig, or and uh, or up to 2,500 psig for storage. So we see that different stations are working at different levels of pressure and the trunk line means is a pipeline designed for natural gas transmission from production areas to consumption points so all these lines require different levels of pressure so we need different types of compressor and compression stations the process stream under compression comes in various points so we can have the various types of um, process streams in this and we find that these streams may be coming from Different um, uh, processes, and then we have the classification of the compressors. And in this, we find we have positive displacement and dynamic compressors. Under positive displacement, we have reciprocating compressor, rotary compressor, and under dynamic, we have the centrifugal compressor and axial compressor. Now, this particular reciprocating, uh, reciprocating compressor is the most widely used compressing system for the natural gas industry. Now let us go to some fundamentals of the compression before we go to compressor. So first we go for this compression of ideal gas, and here we find that for ideal gas we know that P V equal to m R T. This m is the mass and R is the gas constant. Understand this? If we are writing in terms of the number of moles m, then we are we shall be using the universal gas constant. Now we have for polytropic process. We have P V to the power n equal to constant, and if n is equal to one, that is for isothermal process. And for isentropic process, we have n equal to gamma, and that is equal to C P by C V. That is the ratio of the uh, specific heat at constant pressure and the specific heat at constant volume. And if n is between unity and gamma, then we have polytropic process where because Cp is always more than Cv, so gamma will always be more than one. And we also know that for ideal gases, this difference between the specific heat at the constant pressure and constant volume is equal to R. Now, for a gas mixture, if we are applying these equations, then we have to use some mixing rule to find out the average specific heat, uh, uh, and this is one of the ways that we are taking the Uh, summation of the product of the mole fraction and the individual specific heats. So that is how we get the average 
let us speak of the gas mixture. Now next we come to the theoretical work of compression. In this we have that we uh, assume that there is insignificant changes in the kinetic and potential energies and there are no energy losses. Then in this case if we apply the first law of thermodynamics we get the work is equal to the minus the change in the enthalpy and this is given by this particular equation that from integral we are doing from uh, P1 to P2 and in this case the 1 and 2 denote the inlet and outlet um, force and B is the specific volume and P is the pressure of the gas and the negative sign we are putting because we know that work has to be inputted to the compressor to make it work so we are putting it negative. The theoretical work of compression for polytropic work is given by this particular equation which is obtained by integration of the equation shown earlier and we get this particular equation. We find here that this P2 by P1 is the compression ratio that means to what level we are compressing from the inlet to outlet and the temperature at the inlet and N is the molecular mass of the gas and if we put n equal to 1 then we cannot solve this equation directly we have to solve it separately and when we solve it separately we get this as the expression for the work for isothermal compression. Next we go to the compression efficiency. In this case we have different types of efficiencies overall efficiency, isentropic efficiency, polytropic efficiency, volumetric efficiency. Now here we see that the overall efficiency of a compressor depends on these factors like the design details of the compressor, the suction pressure that is the P1, then the speed of the compressor, the compression ratio, the loading of the compressor, the mechanical condition that means if the compressor is running for a long time, if there is any wear and tear of the, uh, comp in the compressor unit. So, and then we find that the ranges of this uh, overall efficiency varies between about 75 to 85 percent based on the ideal isentropic compression process as a standard. And actual efficiency curves are given by the manufacturer. So here we see the compression ratio is uh, determined like this that from the uh, ratio of the absolute discharge pressure to the absolute suction pressure and it is always greater than 1 because P2 is always more than P1 and when we have multiple stages, suppose we have n number of stages, then we find that if Cr is equal to e, uh, on each stage, then we find the compression ratio for each of the stages is P2 by P1 to the power 1 by n, whereas if Cr is not equal to uh, for e, all the stages, then we have to find out the this compression ratio for each of the stages separately. Next we come to isentropic efficiency of the compression and this is the ratio of the isentropic work to the actual work and it is given by this particular expression. In this case this Is signifies isentropic and this is the actual. Next we come to the polytropic efficiency of compression and this is the ratio of the isentropic work to the polytropic work and it is generally used for the centrifugal compressors and is given by this particular expression that uh, this is the gamma, gamma minus 1 by gamma, this is for the isentropic process and n minus 1 by n uh, and this is for the polytropic process. And we find that the polytropic efficiency is always less than the isentropic efficiency. And this may be also determined for some empirical uh, correlation uh, based on the capacity uh, of the particular gas. So this uh, correlation may be also used to find out the polytropic efficiency. So in this particular expression, the gas capacity is given by the uh, CFM that is the cubic feet per minute. Next we come to volumetric efficiency which is generally used for the reciprocating com compressors and in this case it is uh, defined as the actual volume of the gas uh, delivered to Mm. to the this will be eta v. So this is the 
uh, expression for this uh, um, for the volumetric efficiency that is the actual volume of the gas delivered to the piston displacement volume including the dead volume we shall be looking into this a bit later and we find that this particular um, expression is given from the, is given from this equation that this volumetric efficiency depends on the again the pressure ratio and also the ratio of the compressivity factor of the gases and at the inlet and outlet conditions and the value of the gamma and this C here is the clearance volume to the displacement volume. Next we come to outlet temperature of the gas after compression. We know that whenever we are compressing any gas there will be some uh, heating of the uh, gas. So, the if the, uh, in, uh, the temperature increases it will have its own effect on the compression efficiency because uh, the volume of the gas will uh, change due to the change in the temperature. So, it is important for us to know the outlet temperature of the gas. So, here we have for isentropic compression this is the expression to find out the outlet temperature in terms of the inlet temperature, the compression ratio and the isentropic efficiency. And for the polytropic compression we have a similar expression, but in this case we are deriving it from the isentropic in, uh, change in the temperature and we are taking that from the definition for the relationship of the uh, uh, polytropic efficiency we are replacing the n by this expression for the uh, uh, polytropic process. Next we come to the capacity of compressor. In this case it is defined as the actual volumetric rate and that is given in ACFM. This A stands for actual that means it can be either in terms of actual cubic feet per minute or it could be actual cubic meter per hour and is based on the volumetric rate at standard conditions and inlet conditions to each stage. So, here we have the expressions this is this can be derived easily from the gas law and we find to find out the actual capacity we take the standard value and standard value is 14.7 psi and 520 Rankine. So, with this we can find out the actual capacity in terms of the cubic feet per minute and in terms of the meter cube per hour we take the standard cubic meter per hour value and again we put the pressure in terms of bar and temperature in terms of Kelvin and this Z1 and ZR are the compatibilities at the inlet condition and some reference condition respectively. This, this reference condition is taken as the 14.57 PSIA and 60 Fahrenheit or about 1 bar and 15 degree centigrade. Then if we are given the mass flow rate then also we can find out the capacities uh, in terms of the volumetric flow rate from this expression if it is in HPS system and this from this expression if it is in the uh, SI unit. So, this is we are using the uh, gas law uh, to find out the, to, to correlate the mass flow rate with the volumetric flow rate of the gas and in this case we are having the flow rate in terms of mole. So, this is for the mass and this from the mole. In terms of mole also we can correlate the uh, gas flow rate mass flow rate with the volumetric flow rate. Next we come to the power requirement and in this case we find the power requirement is uh, given for these processes like this. If uh, this particular thing is for isentropic and if it is not isentropic then we use another factor for uh, some mechanical losses. So, this particular expression we find that this is used for the uh, to find out the power and this W stands for the uh, work for the shaft work that is the work we have calculated so far. And this is the effect of the RPM on uh, this uh, uh, compressor, if, uh, compressor uh, efficient performance and in this case is find that some ratio is equal to uh, 2 RPM ratios to the power m. Now, this m is taken to be 1 if you are talking about capacity ratio that means the capacities are linearly varying with the RPM and if you talk of the head ratio that means 
how the head will change then we take this m to be 2 and that means they are the head is uh, varying with the square of the rotational speed and then lastly of the bhp ratio that is the power consumed um, that is bhp uh, that is mm, that is going to the cubic uh, power of the rotational speed next we come to the multi staging in the multi staging we have the why the need why we need multi staging because single stage compression if we go for a very large compression ratio we find it will lead to excessive heating and if there is excessive heating we may find the particular material construction may not be able to withstand the high temperature so the gas has to be cooled intermittently so uh, intermittently and for that we need multi staging and it does another uh, advantage is this by when we cool it down then what happens that the gas volume comes down and the, when the gas volume comes down we find the work requirement also comes down so minimum work is obtained when each stage of the multi stage compressor does the same amount of work this can be derived from theory and in that case if same uh, ratio of compression is maintained for each stage that is the total compression ratio from the inlet to outlet is the total compression ratio and if we divide along uh, across each of the stages n is the number of stages so if you divide this total compression ratio in each of the stages and if you put the same ratio for each stage that will lead to the minimum amount of the work lastly we come to the various process design parameters for selection of the compressor here we have the flow rate the gas composition because the gas composition determines the various properties of the gas then we have the inlet pressure and temperature the outlet pressure number of units and the configuration and here are some of these references which give the detail about the compression in the natural gas systems thank you